Well, good morning, Glen Arbor Community Church. Um, we are starting a new series today on living a focused life. And uh, Jim uh, ended our series on loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And this is a good, uh, uh, good follow-on to that of, of how do we be focused on the right things in building the kingdom of God and habits that do that. So we're going to pray and worship and start that uh, today. So why don't we pray together. Lord, thank you that you came for us, that you love us, uh, that uh, we're involved in what you're doing. And thank you that uh, you make up for all of our inadequacies, the things we forget, the things we don't understand, the things we're confused about, Lord, that uh, they are all useful and, and you are compensating and making up and weaving together a plan that we're part of. Thank you. to corral our time, but the Lord himself doesn't change, even as our seasons come and go and our habits come and go. The Lord is unchanging. James 1, 17, it says, there is no shadow in him due to change. He is constant. He is always majestic and always here, never changing, a constant power that made the universe and each one of us. Why don't we stand together and worship that one?
that's never failing. I was struck recently upon reading through Exodus and some of the really intimate conversations that God and Moses have. That he says, hey, write this down. Write down the name of the Lord. And he says, here's the name of the Lord. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, patience, and mercy. And because he's unchanging, that's his character today, especially through the sacrifice of his son on the cross. His mercy is always greater than our sin. His patience is long-standing and with us, praise God, he is slow to anger and abundant in mercy. Praise the Lord, his mercy is
seat for a moment as we reflect on some thoughts from Scripture. Good morning. Our reading this morning is from Proverbs, Proverbs 8, 22 through 36. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of old. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginning of the earth, when there were no depths. I was brought forth when there was no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth, before he had many made the earth and its fields of the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the fountains of this earth, then I was beside him like the master workman. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. And now, O oh sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not neglect it. Blessed is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who fails to find me enters himself. All who hate me love death. Amen. As we reflect on that and get ready for announcements, why don't you stand and turn to each other, greet each other in the Lord this morning. Say hello. All right, good morning. Have a seat. Um, my uh, most exciting announcement today is, uh, you may not have heard this, but uh, Educare got approved by the state or whatever the, you know, regulatory agencies are. If you, if you don't know, Educare is uh, our leasee. Are we the leasee or the, we're the leaser, right? Uh, in the West Wing, and they're finally approved by DCFS. And what? Who else? Uh, the state of Illinois. Yep. So they are going to start uh, hosting classes with kids on November seventh. Correct. So that's great. If you don't know the history of that, they've been working on this for years, and they've signed a lease with us years ago, and they poured something like six hundred thousand dollars into the West Wing to fix it up, 
and uh, they've had staff but no kids for you know, last through the entire pandemic and so we're excited that they actually get to be productive and we'll see a lot of young families coming into the church Monday through Friday 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. right around there so uh, be praying for that for them and just for us to be able to serve them and uh, um, as the way Christ would have us so that is starting in a week or so um, I, I think they're going to ramp up slowly it's not going to be bam right but you'll start to see more kids in the building during the week, Monday through Friday. So that is uh, coming up pretty quick. Um, the, uh, there's a women's conference, as, you've been, as we've been announcing in a couple weekends. And this is uh, hosted by our sister church in Indianapolis, and they've invited us down. They're going to be uh, participating in the Revive Our Hearts, which is a national women's campaign and, uh, or, or conference. And I think it's watching, you're going to be watching videos well, we're there. Is that right, Paul? Okay. Robin's down. And where are people going to stay? Okay. And where are people going to stay when they go down there? In a hotel. Okay. So if you're interested in doing that, it, uh, we did that before pre-pandemic for the first time, and this is the second time post-pandemic. So uh, we're excited about that. If you're interested in that, talk to Linda. Robin's coordinating, but she's not here today. So that's a women's conference coming up in a couple weeks. And uh, the ones that went pre-pandemic really enjoyed it. The only other announcement I have today is that uh, Fusion, our conference in um, family conference in um, January up at uh, the Dells in Wisconsin, there is a early bird discount of 10% by November 1st. And all, you know the reason they do the early bird is so the more people that get registered, then they have a feel for how many are coming to the conference. So if you're interested in that, um, I've also been hearing that hotel space is hard to find, right? It's filling up. So you don't have to stay in the uh, Kalahari Resort where the conference is at. You can stay at any hotel, but you, uh, it's one of those things you probably don't want to wait till the holidays to book your hotel. You probably want to do that now if you're going to go. And it'd be great if you registered just so we had kind of a headcount, a better feel for headcount. The Fusion Conference, if you don't know already, it's family oriented. So there's um, a whole track for Elementary age kids, 5 to 12. There's a child care room during every session for preschoolers to free up the parents uh, to be able to go to seminars and attend sessions. And then there's also a teen track that has some special um, gatherings just for the teens throughout the conference. So it's really designed to be a, a, a all ages conference. And specifically, the programming is designed for all these different age groups. So. We uh, look forward to that. This will be the third time we've ever done Fusion, and that's with seven, eight, uh, seven of our churches along with, uh, in our region, along with some other churches that we have relationship with throughout the Midwest that participate. That is it. Um, we're starting a new series called A Focused Life today, and Dean's going to kick us off, so let's dive right in. Well, um, this is a, seems like a natural thing to do after we just finished our series. Jim finished our series last week on loving the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And uh, I appreciated uh, one of the things Jim shared last week was looking and studying and reading biographies of people who lived a good Christian life. And, uh, and, and things you learn from that. You know, if you look in the Bible, um, these are rough numbers, but there's a lot of people who are mentioned or lives are in the Bible. And in the rough numbers, about a third of them, if you look at their life in the Bible, they did pretty well. But two-thirds of them, they say, well, did they live a life following the Lord, devoted to what he says? Did they live? And two-thirds of them really didn't do that well. And uh, we're going, well, to live a... Fo and the Lord called people to be focused on Him and to put building His kingdom first. 
So we want to look at practical ways that we can do that, living a focused life, focused on those things. So why don't we pray, and we're going to dive into some of these things uh, as we start this series together. Lord, I thank you that you called us to live for the kingdom that we don't see. And Lord, we struggle with managing all the things in front of us and how to think about things. And I pray that you bring clarity and help us uh, be focused on you and putting you first in your son's name. Amen. So I want to just lay out one of the struggles um, that I think happens in this uh, process of how do we stay focused uh, on God and what and ways that work. And so uh, I want to lay out the verse first, and I'm going to talk about managing your time today and living a focused life, but first I want to talk about this area of focus. So uh, the Lord talked about part of this struggle, um, and he said this is a, a, just a verse, just a couple of phrases, but he said, the world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God will live forever, will live forever. So there's a struggle here of we and any person can be focused on the things that pass away, but how do we build a pattern of life that we're focused on the things that last forever. So here's what we're going to do over um, the next five weeks. I'll just lay out the things we're going to cover. I'm talking about time today, and we're going to talk about healthy patterns of life, and that's really one of the themes of the series is how do you have a healthy pattern? And Greg, I think this is Greg, this is uh, talking about pressure. How do you deal with pressure, dealing with pressure in life? We get that from a lot of different areas a lot of different people. Um, and uh, Mike, I think, I think it's Mike, is talking about vision uh, four weeks from today. And we're going to end up with Chris talking about good habits. And sometimes I think, I don't know exactly where Chris is going with this, but where formulas don't always work. Sometimes formulas can be, the world gives you a formula, but we've talked about the difference in those. So, so I want to look at this verse we just looked at again, and, and where people get caught up caught up a little bit in focusing on the desires of the world. And so this, we're going back to, this is the first phrase of 1 John 2.17. The world and its desires pass away. So going to the Greek here, um, um, though the literal meaning of this, of the world's desires pass away, literally means you pass by it. So say you're walking down the street and there's something there and you walk by it. You see it and you go by and it's, it's behind you. The metaphorical meaning is that you pass by it and it disappears. It's in the past. So this is really interesting. It's not, Jesus didn't say it doesn't exist. It's not real. It's virtual. He says, no, this desire this desire of the world is a, um, uh, it's a real thing. It re it's real. It happens. You can connect and engage with it, but it passes away. Those people who get too caught up or focused on that, they're going to suffer loss because they're investing their time and their energy in something that is disappearing. It will fade away. That's what the Lord is saying. It's not where we want to end up. People who get caught up in those things, um, um, they suffer loss. They suffer loss. Second part of this verse, 1 John 2, 17b, whoever does the will of the Lord, of the will of God, lives forever. Lives, the word living, the word lives here, from the Greek, means a state of abiding of one who's continually in the realm of life. You will live forever. And so Jesus is laying out, this is a struggle. This is one of the things we struggle with. And, and that how do we stay focused on the things that are going to last forever? We have to deal with the physical world and work and many things around us. And how do we manage those things? And so, so I want to look at the idea of focus because this whole series is on a focused life. And so um, I actually actually brought the first 
real camera. I found it in the basement that I ever bought uh, when I was in high school, which I will confess out loud was in the 80s, 1980s, if you can believe that. I remember how to open this. So back in the 80s, you may not believe this, there were no digital cameras. There was only a thing called film. Film, film. Expo now there's no film in here. Now this camera, believe it or not, still works. They made some good things in the 80s. Let's see if I can remember how this works here. Oh, no. You have to wind it manually, right? Oh, that was too fast. That was too fast. So I'm going to slow this down. So let's see. Let's see if we can do it. Got to wind it again. Okay, you ready? No? Now, that's where the film used to be, right here. It would wind back here. And when that shutter goes up, the light would come through the lens and expose the film back in the day. So we're talking about focus and being focused on life. So in, in videography and cameras, how focusing works, it's very interesting. There's glass elements in this lens. This lens was made a long time ago. There was no, all of you, does anyone, everyone has a cell phone? Most people have a cell phone. Guess what your cell phone has for focus? How does it focus? automatically, automatically. Most of the time it works pretty well. This has no automatic focus. I don't know if it existed back then. You had to turn this and it moves the elements of the lens to focus on one thing. Moves the things back and actually the, you can actually, you probably can't see it from there, but the barrel moves in and out and it moves the elements of glass so it can focus on whatever you choose. Now, I like to take pictures. Well, I like to take pictures before I made it into my business, and then you like it less. So I, li I like, the, I like the, uh, the rich colors of the fall. I love the sugar maples with the red, rich red color. And I kind of missed it. I'll go out and take a few pictures. So um, I, I caught a little of this here. Now, what's in focus? What's in focus? The leaves are in focus. What's in the background? What, it's a little blurry. You know what we call that in videography? What do we call that? The blurriness in the background? Chris can't say. Chris can't say because he's at the back of it. The, when the background is blurry, there's actually a word for it. The word is bokeh. We call it bokeh. They actually, they use this term, uh, they use this concept because they want you, when you're looking at an image, to focus on the subject. And so they actually, with models, if you're modeling, they actually will set the cameras now to focus on one of your eyes. That's the point of focus. And so the stuff in the back is blurry, so you're not distracted by that. Life is kind of this way. We focus, at least I focus. I can really only focus on one thing at a time really well. And I focus on one thing at a time. So I'm going to show you the next picture. I actually took these near the church here. So let's see if the next one comes up. Now... I'm focused on the leaves still. Now, let's see. Oh, I forgot this doesn't work. See the two little bright circles over there? Not focused on those. What do you think those are? Hard to tell. Not in focus. Could be anything. Could be a street light. Could be a car. Could be a reflection. No, I did not move in this next picture. It, those two. Now, you see the leaves are still there. All I do is move the camera a little bit. I changed my focus. I'm actually standing on the right of way where you're not supposed to be. And probably the engineer is going, hey, I hope that guy, see, actually, you can see the engineer right there, right? He's probably going, what's that guy doing there <laughs> with that camera, right? But now I'm going, oh, I'm a little close to the train. What am I focused on? I can focus on, in life, we can only focus and manage so many things. And if we're going to live a Christian life, we need to be careful what we focus on, <laughs> that we don't get hit by a train. <laughs> but we need to be careful because we can really only focus on so many things at a time and manage them. So, so I'm going to look at time today and how we manage time. And I know that there are hundreds of probably thousands of books written about time management. There's courses on time management, um, and this is not to replace that. So I came up with 
kind of a, a simple way to break some of these things down. Things, activities you could be doing that you, that you really have to do or should do, right? One of them is work. We have to work. We have to work. We teach people how to work. You know, when I was little, I really didn't know how to work. It was something my family did, something my father did. My father used to wake me up in the morning and say, hey, we're going to work. We're going to work. It'd be early in the morning. He was always building something. That was my father. Always built our house, built, renovated my grandmother's cottage where she lived. It didn't have any heat. It was a summer cottage. He had all this stuff. And I went every Saturday morning, let's go. We're going to work. We're going. That's what we do. You know, and I, I learned how to work from being with him. We have to work. We have to spend time developing relationships, right? We spend time doing that. Relationships with our family, relationships with our, our spouse, relationships with, uh, if you're married, uh, with our children, with our neighbors, with our... We spend time in these relationships, right? You need time to rest. If you work all the time, you need time to rest. You need time, not just, not just, you need time to sleep, obviously, if you don't sleep, uh, you don't sleep enough, it catches up with you. But sometimes even things are emotionally stressful. Sometimes you need a break from something where there's a lot of pressure or you're, there's, you need a break from that. Uh, it's like keeping your muscles flexed all the time. You know, I heard this, this is not a good example. I heard Arnold Schwarzenegger talk about this. I wouldn't say he's a spiritual example, but I, I thought it was funny. He said, uh, in this Austrian accent, he said, you know you have eight hours to sleep. Sleep faster. <laughs> <laughs> now, we know that doesn't work. We know that doesn't work. But he was actually a very visionary person. He knew what he wanted to do, and he set out goals. And so we know what he means. It's really not talking about rest. He's talking about ambition. So you need Real rest. You can't sleep faster. <laughs> you need real rest from your life that you can go back and re-engage and do those things again. You, you need time to relate to the Lord. You have a relationship with God. You have an opportunity to relate to God, to talk with Him, to lay your burdens down, to hear from Him. And this is one of the things that is really, it's very easy to get squeezed out. When I get really busy, I'm a worker. I'm a worker. I have more things to do than I'm accomplishing. And so there's always more to do. And this is an easy thing today. Actually, one of the, uh, when Tom Short was here, he said a lot of young people are not having quiet times anymore, not having time in the Word or time in the Bible. And that, he says that's, it's going to affect people if they don't have their own time in relating to God. It's one of the things that's getting squeezed out. The Lord asked us to love others. So I talked about work and relationships. Now, if you're going to love someone, what does that mean? Love others as yourself. You're probably, if you're going to love someone, you're probably going to be working with them, caring for them, helping them, and developing the relationship. You're probably going to be doing both. You know, one of the guys in the neighborhood here, he says, hey, my, my, my car won't start. Will you help me? He says, yeah, I'll, I'll help you. Let's, let's, let's yank the battery out. We yanked the battery out, brought it over. Wasn't the battery. Took up some of my time to do that. But we talk now. I saw him. I said, how's your car running? Oh, it's running fine. <laughs> I said, well, if he gets stranded, call me, you know. But we're spending time helping each other. That's what neighbors do. That's what we do. So you have to balance. And there's lots of things that aren't. This is not a complete list. There's lots of things that aren't on here. You, need, you may need to get some exercise. You may need to do lots of things that aren't on this list. But they're all in here somewhere. So what do we... What do we have to do with our time? So Paul talked about this to the church in Ephesus. He says you need to be careful how you spend your time. In Ephesians 5, he said, he says, Therefore, be careful how you walk, 
not as an unwise man, but not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because why? Because the days are evil. Those evil days. What does he mean by that? The days are a little, the days are a little ruthless. We need to, we need to walk as wise men, being wise with how we use our time wise with how we use our time because the time is a little ruthless. It gets away from us. It gets away from us. Paul said something similar to the church in Rome, to the church in Rome. He said, do this understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. He says, Time is going by. There's only so much time to do these things. It's a little ruthless. You know, when you're younger, you don't really think, oh, i got plenty of time. I've got my whole life in front of me. You know, but it goes by quickly. Those of you who have a little gray hair, like I do, um, those of you who have a little gray hair like I do, you know how fast time goes by. You go, what, what happened? What happened? You know, it's funny, when I walk by the mirror, I see myself with this gray hair, and I go, that's not me. I don't have, what, who, how did that happen? What happened? What happened? I remember when uh, I graduated college, I had moved, I was packing up my car to move out of the house, my parents' house. I went to college, I had internships, and I was working for construction companies, and I was packing the car done with college to come out here and take my job. My parents live in Connecticut. And so we're saying goodbye. I'm now starting my career. My college time is over, and I'm moving out of my parents' house for good. Right? I'm starting my own life. I'm moving out. And my parents are in the driveway, and my mother's there, and she breaks down, and she starts crying, and she says, you grew up so fast. What happened? It went by so quick. What happened? Time goes by quickly. It goes by quickly. We don't have a lot of time. So Paul is saying this to the church in Rome. We need to be careful. And he says the time is now. The time is now because your salvation is closer. The time is now to build the kingdom of God. There's less time to do this. Jesus said the same thing. John 9, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no man can work. Part of this series, part of this time management is a reality is we are not going to be able to focus on everything. We're going to need to be careful that we, we don't let this slip away and get too focused on the things that are going to disappear. The world's desires are going to disappear. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of philosophies that are pursuing satisfaction in the world that go away, that go away, that don't last, that don't last. So what I want to do is I want to uh, give you a little way kind of break some of these things down and maybe we'll do a little personal evaluation not going to be out loud for you to think about your time and how you're doing and we all have different situations we are managing different things um, work situations relatives where you live there's lots of things we really have to manage so let me let me put a, some of these up here and you can kind of do a little evaluation of how are we doing with these things all right so we're going to start with this, evaluating your time. So I would say, <clears throat> become, if you're not good at this yet, you can say, oh, you know, you have to learn how to be a worker. Some people, a few people, that comes naturally to them, but I was trained this way. I was trained this way. When I was a kid, I can remember, when I was a kid, there weren't as many entertainment options. Actually, the Internet didn't exist. It didn't exist. And back then, to watch a program on television, you had to catch it when it was on. There was no, you couldn't go to Netflix. There was no Netflix, right? There was, there was oh, I can watch this when I want. If, no, if you wanted to catch a Saturday morning cartoon, 
Now, I remember my father would be, and I wasn't supposed to watch television on Saturday morning. We were supposed to be work. He'd be down in the garden weeding, weeding the garden, and no one was in the house, and I would turn the cartoons up. And I could watch them then. But I became a good worker. I became a good worker. My father taught me that. He taught me that. I did a lot of things. You know, my, we went through the oil embargo, and a lot of homes in New England have oil heat. And oil got expensive. And my father and my father going, oh, I said, you know, oil's expensive. And the, and the next winter, next summer, we were cutting down trees. We were heating with wood to save money on oil. Now, did I learn great skills in chopping down trees and cutting wood? We split the wood by hand. I did that. That was my job for hours. There's something I liked about it. There's something I liked about it. And I, well, did that, it served me in life to learn how to work hard and be consistent. That is a life habit that's good. So wherever you are, boy, approach life that way. That you finish what you start. You learn to do that. Become a good worker. It will serve you in many ways. It will serve you in many ways. Develop relationships. Develop relationships. You need to spend time in your relationships in developing them, being generous and helping other people. We are going to do this together. Have relationships that you learn from, too. That, that there's people you can be coached. You know, th my, three, my three sons, that was a story. <laughs> my three sons were all in running sports. All of them were in running sports. It's funny, when you're in a sport, you're, there's a coach who's helping you to improve in the sport. And the, person, the coach actually tells you things you could do better. That's helpful. Hey, maybe have you considered this? Pass on the left side. Do this. Do that. I think you need to speed up a little sooner. In life, sometimes it's helpful to have someone who can coach us. Come alongside and, hey, how are you doing? Have you thought of this? Have you thought of this? That's helpful. So a few things you might watch out for. My tendency, because I've grown up with this pattern of working and working hard and learned that from my father, is my tendency is to neglect the relationships for a while. My tendency is, well, I'll get around to that later, some other time. You know, I'll patch that up later. I'll take my wife out later when I'm done with all these house projects, right? We'll work on that relationship later. Even relationship with God. Well, I'm real busy right now. I will get to those things later. And things, the priorities, can get a little out of balance. So you may have a strength. You may be really good. So my tendency is, because I like to work and I like to accomplish things and I have lots of things to do, is to kind of let those things go too far. And I'm actually working on changing that this year, that, that if there's someone I can connect with, someone I can help out, and if I look across my relationships who I'm intending to share with and follow up and build a stronger connection, I've been working on that this year. And guess what it's done? It's cost me some time. It's cost me getting some things done, but it's been really good. It's been really good for my friendships. It's been really good for my relationships. But it's a change that I'm working on. I'm not saying I've arrived, but it's been a good change for me that I feel like that's a little better because people are important to God. People are important to God. Evaluating your time. So how are you doing with work? Does that have an appropriate amount of time, appropriate amount of focus? How are you doing with relationships? with you, your wife, your husband, your family, your children, your grandchildren. Is that in balance? How about relating to the Lord? I think there's a lot of pressures on our time. There's a lot of pressures. There's so many things we could do. And it's very easy, very easy, because the days are evil, to let this area drift. Do you pray? Do you spend time in your 
relationship with God? Is that an area that you would say you feel clo- consistently close to God? It's easy to let this drift. It's easy to let this drift. I was in a meeting once. It was a committee. There was a lot of people in education and school environments. I think I was probably the only person in ministry there. But the person who started the meeting, it wasn't a Christian meeting, and they said, had an icebreaker. And they said, hey, uh, we're going to go around the room, and you say why you're here on the earth. What's your purpose in life? Now, you don't want to go first with that. So luckily, I wasn't the first one. I have some time to think. I said, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? And they went, they went around. And, and there were a lot of people. I'm here to help children, do a lot of educate. I'm here to teach children, a lot of help them mature, help them learn about this. And that, a lot of good things, really. And, uh, and then it got to be my turn. And I, and I said, I said, you know, God, I believe God is real and he cares deeply about every person. And I'm here to help people discover that reality. And there was silence around the table when I said that. And the lady who was running the meeting, it was like a pause, because who was running the meeting, she said, well, that's, that's beautiful. And it is really beautiful, that concept, that reality, that God wants to be involved with each person. And there are times that you can say that. So you know what happened? Someone came in late to the meeting. Forget his name. Let's say his name was John, and he sat down. <laughs> and she said, the lady who was running the meeting, she said, John, we're doing this icebreaker. Um, and I'll, she explained the icebreaker. She said, I'm going to give you an example Dean, can you share what you said again? <laughs> well, why, do you, why do you think she said that? She wanted to hear it again. It's a beautiful thought to think of that reality, that God cares about each person so deeply. So if we know that and we feel that, I didn't know that was coming. We don't know when there's going to be an opportunity to do that. So somewhere we have to have a relationship with God where we know that enough that we can testify that God is good and God cares about you. So in your time, if you're, if you're too pressured or too pressed, or you need to have this balance that you feel close to God. So last but not least, and I, I wanted to address this because I think this is, this is a new phenomenon. It's a new struggle that didn't exist a while ago. Uh, I was talking a, a little bit, I was joking a little bit that when I was a kid, the virtual world didn't exist. We had television and radio, right? That's what you had, television and radio. And, and there was no aspect of watching a show or being able to see something or... Now, but you think how much it's progressed. Now you can watch the show you want, when you want, again, right? Now say there's a particular scene that you like. Like say, I really like, what was that uh, movie? The uh, Top Gun Maverick movie, right? I really like that. I enjoyed it, you know? And so I, but there's a scene that I like in that movie, and I want to, you can just watch a scene now, right? You can go and go to YouTube and just watch that scene. Okay, I just watch that, right? I can just watch that. Well, you know what's happening now? Have you heard who is stealing tons of traffic from YouTube and Facebook? TikTok is stealing tons of traffic, tons of traffic. And actually, YouTube and Facebook are trying to compete. You, so Facebook has reels and YouTube has shorts. What have they come up with these little 30-second videos, little tiny videos and, and people, you can kind of flip through, I like that one, you know, because, so now, there's so many options, really, just to stay entertained, just to keep your mind busy with something, so 
that's not real rest, I don't think. I don't think. If you look kind of at the American way of doing things, the American way is work, 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 vacation. Right? Work, 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 vacation. The biblical model of rest is work for six days, one day of rest, one day of true rest, connect with family, connect with God. Again, work for six days and rest. Work for six days and rest. So I think for young people with all these entertainment options, even for older people, even for gray-haired people, I've found this, this struggle that sometimes we can fill up our time with a virtual world, but we're not really getting rest. We're taking a break from work, but we're not getting rest. In some ways, it's an escape. So I've shared in the past that I have a, uh, uh, there was one video game I got really good at. My boys showed it to me, and, uh, and I get caught up in it, and I wish I, wish I could say, that I have the self-control through the Holy Spirit to resist the video game, but I do not. <laughs> I do not. I do not. And when I fixed my computer, I took it all apart, put it back together. I believe the Lord had the computer fail, so I would stop playing the video game. And then I fixed the computer, and there was that game. And then the same thing happened. I'll just play once. 20 minutes. The game's about 20 minutes. And 20 minutes became, I'll play it again. No, it's 40 minutes. No, well, it's two hours. And the game keeps your stats. You've won so many battles. It's a, it's a battle game, of course, where you're shooting people, sh ships, you know. So anyway, but I found that for me, the best thing for me, I said, I don't want to spend this much time doing this, and I have a hard time saying no to it. So I deleted it off my computer again. <laughs> I deleted off my computer because I just found the temptation too much and I just found I was spending time in a way that wasn't the best and it wasn't restful either for me. So this is a new struggle that I think you young people have to contend with is how does this have a proper place in my life where it's not too much. If I'm video gaming all the time but I spend no time reading the Bible, no time in the Scriptures, no time talking to God. It's out of balance. Out of balance. All right. So, um, so I wanted really to just give you a little framework. I know this is kind of quick of kind of evaluate how do I spend my time. And so um, kind of evaluate those things. You have work. You have time with other people. Right? You have time with God. If you had to adjust any of those, would you say you would change any of those? Well, this is a good time to kind of reevaluate this year. This year. We're coming into the end of the year. Let's see, November starts. That's Tuesday, right? November's Tuesday. Can I think about if you're going to change something next year that there's a different pattern for how you spend your time, where it's in balance, where it's... Say, I feel connected with God, following Him, and these things are in balance. What would you change? Is there anything you would change? If you evaluate, hey, you know what you should do? You should make a plan. You should make a plan for what you're going to change. Sometimes you have to make the plan more than once. <laughs> with the video game, I deleted it. And then I was traveling, and I got bored, and I put it back on my computer. And then the Lord worked out my computer to break, to help me. <laughs> but if you know, that's a hard thing. Hey, share your plan with someone. Say, hey, this is what I'm going to do. What do you think? This is what I'm going to do to have these things be more in balance in our lives, in our lives. So I would, I would put that out to you. Do you feel like your work has an appropriate focus for you? Your relationships? Are there any strained relationships that maybe you should look at? See, maybe it shouldn't be that way. Maybe it shouldn't be that way. Um, and 
and last but not least is what about time with the Lord? Maybe even changing your plan of how you spend time with God. Maybe you do that. One thing I don't do in my personal time with God is I don't, I don't sing too often on my own because people in the house think it's weird. <laughs> But if I go out, if I go out, I will do that. It is a great change in the dynamic of my relationship with God. So I think maybe in your management of your time that you can say, I'm not getting caught up in the way of the world or the desires of the world, but this helps me allocate my time in a way that is good and helps me put the kingdom of God first. Those things are in balance. So I would think about that. I'm just going to give you a minute to reflect on that and think about that for you. And this is what I would encourage you to do. If there's something on your heart, we're going to pray in just a minute. I would just have you tell God that. God, I would like this to be different. I, would you help me? And you can tell God that. I would like this to be different. So I'm going to pray, and then whatever that is for you, if there's something there, you can pray that to God. Say, God, I would like this to be different in my life. I would like to know you're better. I would like to feel like you're close. And it's okay if you're honest. I have never had God be ruthless with me. Whenever I speak with him, he never comes back at me and says, hey, you know, you're really a jerk. God has never done that with me. He's always gracious. Whenever, I, whenever he speaks to me, it's always out of, I don't hear an audible voice, but it's always out of love and compassion. You can go to him and say, God, I, I would like this to be different. Will you help me? And God is always gracious. So I'm going to pray. If there's something on your heart, just pray that in your mind to God. God can hear your thoughts, and you go ahead and do that. I'm going to give you a minute to do that. Lord, I thank you that you're involved with our lives. You know every struggle. You know we're looking to have you first in how we think and how we work, and how we do things. And I do pray that uh, you would help us. And we lay that we are, we, if we look at our lives, sometimes we realize that things could be better if they were a little different. If we spent our time a little differently. And Lord, we put these things at your feet. If you have something on your heart, you go ahead and tell the Lord what that is right now that you would like to be different in your life Lord we lift these things up to you and we thank you that you care about us and you help us in ways that we're weak help us to follow you and be focused on you in your son's name Thank you, Dean. Just kind of from an announcement perspective, I was realizing as I was listening, so let's put two things together here. And Dean had mentioned that November begins Tuesday, and Mike mentioned that the early bird deadline for fusion ends November 1st. So if you put those two things together, that means the early bird deadline for fusion ends in 48 hours. So that was something I was putting together in my head, in my seat. But Thank you, Dean, so much for leading us through how to kind of organize our time to be thinking through how those decisions on a daily basis matter for our growth as children of God. Why don't we stand together and continue worshiping the Lord? Justice and praise 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Go in peace, brothers and sisters. And may the Lord be with you all.